Hi everybody, Andre from CFX Films here, and it's been a while since I've posted a tutorial, but I'm excited to be back and bringing you something that I think you guys will enjoy very much and actually benefit from. So this is going to be a several part series on how to make a modern responsive interface or 3D menu in Unity, I guess 4.6 and up. So this is using Unity's new UI system. Then again, anyone who's not using Unity's UI system, who is using the Unity engine, uh, you are definitely missing out and you should be upgrading because uh, things just aren't compatible anymore. All right, well, first thing we're gonna start with is basically setting up the canvases and the camera and the animation for the camera switching back and forth from the settings menu. So this video that's playing right now over top, so you'll see this, this is the demonstration video that I just posted um, just a couple days ago. And that is what this looks like as a finished product. So I removed a lot of the extra, extra content that was actually in that build and, and I only have what you need to see here. Well, mostly only what you need to see. And uh, I've disabled the particle effects so you'll see it without any visual effects or fire or sparks and you'll see it what it what it's supposed to look like uh without any of that extra stuff so you see most of the programming side so if you want to spice it up on your end you can perfectly do that i'm just going to teach you how to make a menu and uh, the functionality of it so the way i'm going to do this is i'm going to have my menu that i've already built here and i'm going to deconstruct it and show you how i built it so you can replicate the process so first thing you're going to need is uh, the main camera and the main camera here. I set the field of view to 60. You can change this, but because I didn't want the other menu to show up in the, the camera's perspective while you're in the main camera, I just had it set to 60. Honestly, you can have this at whatever you want, but uh, I think it, it starts to look a little warped when you have it any higher than, than 70 or so. And uh, I, I set the clear flags setting to solid color and I set the solid color to black. You're going to have two canvases and these canvases are um, set to world space in their render mode. This is extremely important. Otherwise, um, you will not be able to have the camera animating between the two menus or and, and have this uh, fun effect. So you can have these menus positioned wherever you want. That's the beauty of having them set to world space. And uh, I set it here you can change the positions and, and I did actually adjust it a lot while I was setting this up uh, and that has to do with the camera animation which we will get to in this video. All right so the next thing is the can camera animations and if you aren't new to Unity which I hope you're not uh, otherwise some of the things that I'm talking about are going to go over your head. Um, hopefully not but I'm just being realistic and you should probably have a, uh, a solid understanding of the Unity engine uh, before watching this video. So the first thing you're going to need to add is the animator and you can add the animator by selecting your camera in the uh, hierarchy, clicking window and going to animator. And if you don't have any animator created, you can go and um, anywhere in your assets folder, which I made a separate folder for it called animations. You can right click in here, create, and then uh, right here you see animator controller. That's what you want to click. So I created one called main menu cam and when you double click it, it will open up a default uh, any state and entry. Those are the two things that will actually be in this animator and you'll have you'll have no parameters or layers and uh, certainly no animations. So the way I'm handling this is actually let me load up the three animations. So there's menu cam position one and let me try and shrink this so you can see it. What, it, this, what this basically does is it switches the camera from the uh, first position to the second position. The second one is from the second position to the first position. And then I have a menu cam idle that I had here just uh, so I could have a default animation state for uh, the camera to fall back on. So in case you have to override any of your um, actions or decisions when you when you have multiple windows that you're clicking on, it's just safe to have that so you don't have any uh, glitchy camera animations. And uh, I went into the animator and then I added all three of them here. So you have your idle, position one, which is the first one that it would move to, which uh, moves to the setting screen, and then camera position two, which is the only other 
option that it has. So from the settings menu, if you wanted to create another menu that the camera moves to, you would have to create another animation here, have the transition going to that, and then uh, be smart about how your transitions are coming back to your original positions and then the idle. But in this case, I have the settings and then I have the, uh, the normal window. And the way that it switches back is through the transitions, which use a, uh, which in this case I use the float parameter. So up here you can create, uh, you can create a new parameter and you can decide between a float, integer, boolean, or trigger. Honestly, it's great to use a boolean uh, integer. I guess you can use zero and one and floats are the same. I just got into a habit of using a float uh, so I could, um, have numbers in between. So between zero and one, I could have 0 0.5 and that could usually equate to another animation in between, uh, but you don't need that. So uh, once you have the, your parameter, you can create the transition. So if animate is greater than five, then it, and it uh, animates. And if it's less than five, it goes back and then automatically it goes straight back to idle. See here, so I have no conditions, but you do need to have exit time otherwise it will be invalid. It needs to know how to transition back to the idle state. And when you put that all together, uh, you can play all three of those animations and it works well. Also, make sure your idle is your default state. So by, do, by setting the default state, you can right click and set as layer default state. That's important. Otherwise your camera is gonna be starting on the wrong animation. Cool, so that is the camera. And on the main canvas, I have just a few items here. I have this little version counter in the corner. This is just a, a text that I've actually rotated off of the canvas. Um, so that's just to uh, match the perspective of the camera. And you can do this, and Unity actually is pretty powerful in letting you actually uh, rotate them on a 3D plane. So I have three buttons here. I have the play campaign, settings, and I have exit. This is a little corner, corner art piece just to add some extra detail, but that is all optional. It's game object UI button, but your defaults are this, <laughs> this, uh, this is a gorgeous looking button. Not really, uh, but what you want to do is just kind of place it anywhere you want. And, uh, I, I usually name them with a, uh, BTN and underscore, whatever the, the button's name is. I have that naming convention because it's just easier to organize it in script and call it. And, and, uh, and also they organize Use, uh, Unity used to not uh, allow you to organize the way that you want your items to be listed in the hierarchy. So I, I got into a habit of that before because then it would actually organize it the way that I wanted to. But now they actually let you put it whatever you, wherever you want in the, uh, in the hierarchy. So you don't necessarily need to do that, but it makes it easier. When you're selecting the button, usually I want to change the uh, source image. And I have my custom UI details that I created. So I have a lot of logos here. Uh, these are all for different projects that I've worked on. Just, you know, just experimenting with some different abilities. Um, and uh, let's see. So I have button frame wide here. And this is what it would look like. And I think I created another one. Design, which one's this one? Oh, okay. So I had this one has a fade. So you want to make sure that the color here in the image is always white. I mean, honestly, you can change the default color, but it's best to do that either in your image that you would create in Photoshop or another equivalent software, or you would want to make your default colors in your image or in your, your interface, your buttons, uh, bright enough that you can actually change the base color and not actually have it look out of place. So you can actually change the color a bit and it still looks natural. But in this case, I kept it white because I wanted to have that clean, sleek design. And uh, then the most important part here is when you're hovering over the buttons, let me show you an example. So when you're hovering over the buttons, you see that it actually, they actually highlight up, highlight up, light up, same thing. And uh, when you click on them, they get darker. And then when you hover off, they change their own colors again, back to the default. And those I have set here. So I made their, their normal color set to gray, so it actually darkens them. And then this, this little white bar is their alpha channel, so you can actually change visibility. So if you want to have uh, layer, multiple layering buttons, then they would show up behind it uh, based off of the order that they're listed here. So if you want to see what my project looks like now and then want to uh, copy that in yours, these are the settings you're going to use.
So just try and replicate that and it'll look just fine. And uh, then I just change, you know, rename the text. So you can name that whatever you want. Imported a separate font. This is pretty standard stuff. You can, you know, make the buttons however you want. That's the easy stuff. And then down here, we have the event triggers. So that is how you detect whether or not when you're hovering over the buttons, uh, you want them to do something or not. So all the different button options that I have are the play campaign settings and exit. But also when you click play campaign, three separate buttons show up. You have continue, new game and low game. And I have these all show up based off of the uh, on click script, which access it, accesses the main camera or main menu script that I wrote. And then I have a function in there. This is written in JavaScript, by the way, uh, called play campaign. And uh, that just makes it easier for me to enable and disable the objects. So if you click the main camera, this is where you'll be adding your main camera script. As you can tell, I have a lot of different options all listed here. So uh, we will get there. And when you click are you sure or exit, are you sure shows up and it basically says, do you want to quit? And then you have a no and yes button and all the same naming conventions and the same color highlighted and pressed uh, levels. They're all the same here. So we're going to disable that. And one thing that I want to uh, make sure that you're aware of is whenever you have an image like this corner detail, make sure that you have Raycast target unchecked. That is very important because Raycasting the target means that if the mouse is hovering over it, it would actually function as a solid or an actual item that is being uh, rendered in that scene. If you have Raycast target disabled, the, uh, the scene just ignores it and you can't actually interact with that object. So if you accidentally have it over top of an object like this, you wouldn't be able to click the play button because you have this sprite that's in the way. So having Raycast target disabled uh, lets you um, ignore any, any extra art or details that you have in the scene. And the last thing about hovering over the buttons is the fade duration, the amount of time that it takes to fade between all the different states, so pressed, highlighted, and normal. I like 0 0.5. 0 0.05 seconds. Uh, that's just a nice pace for me. You can change this to whatever you want. Honestly, it doesn't make a big difference, but I like to have it very quick because it just, I don't know, it just feels modern. Also, if you notice, I have a custom cursor. That's also, uh, you can add that by going to edit, project settings, going into player, and then you have default cursor. And this is the cursor that I made in Photoshop. So nice little image. You can add it uh, you can add whatever you want, make that the default cursor, and it's kind of fun. It adds an extra detail to your scene. Most games nowadays use that anyway. And that's all I'm going to cover in this video, guys. This is just setting up the, the canvases, and the same process, honestly, is over here to set up the settings. And I'll get there in this next video when I am actually programming it. Here, I just wanted to set up and show you guys basically how to create the scene and get it get it going. But a lot of the same operations that I just talked about uh, with the main canvas, we will be using in the options canvas. And when we start getting to the coding, you'll see how all this comes together. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you will join me in my next part where I break down the uh, the options menu and the different panels in there, and hopefully we'll get to some coding too. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you learned something from this, and I will see you in the next video.